child of God. No matter how God has made you, and no matter what you have been through, you are welcome here. And we're glad to, to worship together. A big welcome to our, our visitor and for those that we don't get to see often. We're glad, we're glad that all are here. Just to know about uh, what is upcoming, I want you to know that your sister church, if you didn't know you had a sister church, it's right from Laurel because... You share the same mama preacher. So our, your sister church, Bride Hope Laurel, is having, instead of the Apple Battle Festival, because that of risk of COVID has been scaled down to be a deluxe, uh, it's deluxe at least, rummage sale. So be uh, feel free to go up there on, on Saturday uh, from 8 until noon and, and try to find something that you would like. If you've actually never been there, just go to see the place. It is truly a gorgeous setting uh, just to be near the creek and, and just be up there. So I invite you to come to that. I want to let you know that uh, we're having a lay leadership meeting tomorrow at 530 or whenever it was. I told you it was uh, last meeting. I, I think I said 530. But whatever I said, the same thing. <laughs> However, the church council meeting that was scheduled for this Tuesday is going to be postponed for so we, we let you know, probably a couple weeks, but we'll let you know when that will, will, will begin. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation this morning? Then I invite you to rise for the call to worship. Found the Lord. And the Lord is found in the love of our neighbor. Come, let us be nourished by the living water. Together we will worship the one who enables us to survive. Let us join in. Sweet by and by. Are we doing it together? Oh, my God. Sorry. Sit down. I'm changing churches. How do you know?
a time in our service for prayers that lift one another up, lift up our community, lift up the need in the world. And um, I'll, I'll hold up to you that Faith Lynn, and that's uh, Barbara Chris's therapist, uh, sister, is having open heart surgery on the 27th. Um, so we will be praying for her. She's this week and a little bit upcoming to, to, to that time. And then I want to hold up as well. We had her on a list once before for a procedure she was having. Sarah Brotherton from the Bright Hope Oral Church. She, uh, this, the procedure she had before was successful. So now I think they can take all the cancer out with surgery. And that is uh, this week on Tuesday. So if you can hold up Sarah in, in, in prayers this, this coming week, I, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, Martha Hannon, uh, Zoe's great grandmother, is actually doing really well. And she actually got to see her grandparents as they were going through on the way to see her great grandmother uh, this weekend. So we're, we're grateful for, for her healing. Um, are there other prayer concerns or celebrations to lift up for us? Nancy um, Chip's brother-in-law and, and, and from uh, his first marriage and a good friend of Cindy and uh, afraid that he's passed this morning. So, so we hold up all those um, who who loved and and mourn Nancy, especially hold up Chip and Cindy. Uh, we hold we hold them up. Other other concerns or prayers or celebrations. Then let us come to a time of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day and all the ways in which you have blessed us, all the ways that your spirit has been in and through us, upholding us in the times of challenge and rejoicing with us in the times of joy. Lord, we hold up to you this day for your care. We hold up Mitzi and we hold up all those who loved him and 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 mourn for for him through his long struggle with, with with illness. We hold up for your care this week in, in surgery, Faye and Sarah. We hold up to you for healing and care, Linda, Frida, Chuck, and Luke. Lord, we hold up to you all those who are who are sick in our country and in our world. We hold up to you all the healthcare workers that are so worn down by the length and the um, drastic challenge of this pandemic at a time when people thought things would be better. We hold them up in their continued struggle. We hold up those who are recovering from uh, the challenges of the, the storms that have come through our country, those who have lost homes and people and the floods and storms. Lord, we hold up all the concerns of our hearts which were not mentioned aloud. Lord, you know our needs and you care and love us. So we hold them up to you and we ask all of this in your Son's name who taught us to pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever.
when he grew, when he was growing up, I told him that he uh, told him to uh, quite a bit young. I told him question all authority. <laughs> he got that one really well. Our scripture reading today comes from Mark's Gospel, and I'll be reading today out of the Common English Bible Version. 
Now in here you might hear something, if you're not familiar with this translation, something that sounds a little different to what you might be used to hearing. Jesus uses a title for himself in Mark's Gospel that we, we, in most translations, it's called the Son of Man. But in this translation, it's the human one. Now maybe that seems a little odd, like why would they change Jesus' chosen title? Well, they didn't change it. It's just another way of reading what it was. In, in these ancient languages of, of Greek and, and Hebrew as well, the way to say something would often be different. Like an arrow would be the son of a bow. You know, comes forth from a bow. It's sort of a poetic aspect of language. So to call someone, to call yourself son of man is really another way of saying human. And so Jesus is underlining his humanness, his with usness in this title that he gives. But sometimes maybe we lose some of the impact of that because we think of son of man as this title which is, you know, high and mighty, when really it was a title of, I'm here with you. So here now the words from Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. From there, Jesus and his followers went through Galilee, but he didn't want anyone to know it. This was because he was teaching his disciples. The human one be delivered into human hands. They will kill him. Three days after he is killed, he will rise up. But they didn't understand this kind of talk, and they were afraid to ask him. They entered Capernaum. When they had come into the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about during the journey? They didn't respond, since on the way they had been debating with each other about who was the greatest. He sat down and called the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be least of all and servant of all. Jesus reached for a little child, placed him among the twelve, and embraced him. Then he said, Whoever welcomes one of these children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me isn't actually welcoming me, but rather the one who sent me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of us be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now I'm going to ask you to do something that is probably impossible to do, but I'm going to ask anyway. I want you to remove any thought of political connection. Yeah, I know, we can't do that. Just try with me. And I want you to think about the slogans from the 2016 uh, presidential election that make America great again or, or together oh gosh I can't remember it now better together so better together or make America great again and the fact that I even faltered on one maybe could tell you regardless of your political st stance one had a bigger impact because like it or not we as Americans we like greatness we like things that are great. Years and years after Muhammad Ali's uh, uh, career as a boxer, we can still think about him as the greatest. And there's many places in popular music where self-aggrandizement is quite common and, and celebrating about being great and looking at how great one is. We like to be exceptional and greatness. You see bumper stickers that say, my child is an honor student at hometown elementary school. You, you don't see any bumper stickers that say, my child does fine at hometown elementary school. <laughs> yes, we don't see that one. No, we want exceptionalism. In fact, we want our child, our children, to be able to be fine somewhere where they feel like they are truly exceptional. 
know, otherwise we would worry about how their self-esteem would be. We like things to be best and the greatest. We want to feel better than some uh, other people and at least something to assuage our egos. It, we, we love being a part of the winning team so much that people get seriously involved in sports teams. And now maybe that's saying this as a person who really doesn't care anything about sports and can't understand the connection, but it's a very popular thing to be very involved. People will invest a great deal in their hometown team or give money to their college so that their college teams can be great so they can feel the greatest about it. We're kind of obsessed with being great, better than. Now, when we compare this back to Jesus' time, it was the same. Eh, people are still people. They were still arguing about this necessity to be great, to be better than. So, let's set the scene a little bit here. When, when Wiley stepped so wonderfully in, me, in for me last week, uh, uh, he went over the passage where Jesus first foretells the fact that he is going to be crucified. And when he says this, he rebukes Peter. Or Peter says, no, that can't be. No way. That's just not how it's going to be. Say it isn't so. And he rebukes Peter very harshly. He says, get behind me, Satan. Now, I think, really, what he wasn't really calling Peter Satan so much as the thing that Peter was saying is the temptation that Satan would offer him to not go through the hard journey that he has to do. And so he tells him, get behind me. This idea of side-skirting the hard work I need to do, get behind me, Satan. From the disciples' perspective, surely they thought Peter, who was the top disciple, got knocked down a few pets. Now maybe from the, from the Gospels it would be a little harder to say that Peter is the greatest, but if we look at early Christian history, it's pretty clear they considered Peter to be the greatest of the disciples. There is still a long-standing understanding that the, the Bishop of Rome, the current Pope, is understood to be the seat of Peter, of St. Peter, that that is the connection to this and how highly he was esteemed. So maybe this discussion with the disciples, maybe they felt there was an opening for the best one now that Peter had gotten knocked down a bit. And they were vying for the position of which one of them could fill it. And Jesus knew. He heard them talking. He could tell what was going on. And so instead of picking a new favorite or saying that that is something that needed to be done, he taught them a lesson. So he got a little child, little child. And um, children in our society, we truly esteem children. They're wonderful. Children are our future. I'll save you from singing that song, but, but we all know it. Children are our future. We, we hold up children very highly. We want children to have a wonderful childhood, something that's magical and great, and a place where they find their esteem, and we really think it's important to take care of, of our kids, and uh, even, I, I mean, I realize there are people in, in society that aren't that big on kids. I, I know they exist, and they don't really like kids that much, but even those folks especially will tell you, society at large loves children. Now, back in Jesus' time, in this situation, it was really very different. Now, people did love their own children. People haven't changed that much, but the concept of childhood as something wonderful and esteemed wasn't there. That there were no child labor laws. That's a relatively recent concept in our society of protecting the time of childhood as this wonderful time of play and learning and connection. Now, 
And, and, and maybe your own kids, you put them to work young, even though not in a factory. <laughs> but, but as a whole in society, that idea of working and being part of things, it, it was just different. Childhood was important to get them to adulthood, but it wasn't something more highly esteemed, esteemed than adulthood. It's not like, it, now if we hear of a child dying, we are far more heartbroken than someone who has grown up. But I think maybe the opposite was the case then. And part of it was fewer children did make it to adulthood, to be honest, because this was before vaccines, and there were far more diseases that, that could take a child and they wouldn't grow to adulthood. Now we fully expect every child to, 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 to make it to that point. But the esteem and the level of position they have in society was decidedly different. So when Jesus pulls out a child, a little child as an example, that is someone that is less than, less intelligent, obviously less experience, less abilities, just less than. And so Jesus pulls them in and embraces this child. It doesn't say for sure he stood up with the child, but that is how I envision it. Standing up with the child, bringing the child who's down on this level, eye to eye with the human one. If you want to be great, you need to lift up <coughs> people. You need to serve people. You welcome the children, those who are, are not on your same level, but lower. You lift them up. You have a wrong understanding of what it means to be great, of what it means to serve. Jesus teaches his disciples both then and now. This is really easy to get addicted to the idea of being great, of having accolades given to you for how great a job you do in different things. And, and that feels great, and I, I understand that, but Jesus is trying to turn the tables on us here and tell us what true greatness is. True power is not the ability to lord over other folks and get them to do the things you want to for them. That's our natural way of thinking as a great person. They have a personal assistant. They don't have to take care of any of the ordinary things in life. Other people who are lesser on the hierarchical train will take care of that. And they can, whether or not they lord it over others, they are above. Jesus is like, that's, that's not what greatness is. No, greatness is not how many people you're over, but how many people you can lift up. How many people you can help. How many people you can bring to the same level versus worrying about who was on the higher level. Jesus, who had the highest level of any person who walked the earth, named himself a name that put himself on the same level as everyone else. I'm human. Son of man. I am with you. Eye to eye. That is what <coughs> weight is. That is what power is. Lifting up. In the, in the groupings of people together, taking the time to lift up and carry those who are in the greatest need. That is our calling as Christians. That when we catch ourselves thinking of some people here and some people <coughs> here, know that all of us have the same value in God's eyes. Maybe some actions are better than others. I certainly can agree with that. But each person has value. And as much as we like the accolades of having a certain 
thing associated with us, with, with, with our position or how good we are with something. Really, there is no title greater than being a child of God. See, you're used to hearing that phrase of being a child of God. Just think about it. You're a child of the Most High God. What title could be greater? What could society give you as a title that would be greater than that one? And Jesus put himself with us in that title. I say that makes it even greater. We might find ourselves like the disciples, trying to lobby through life to, to get a little bit higher, to be a little bit better than somebody else and get our esteem there. And, and there's, no, there's no problem, there's no shame in trying to do your best in life. But I invite you to ground your esteem, your value, in the fact that you are God's child. You are Jesus' sibling. That is the greatest that you could ever aspire to. And it is here now. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, it is so easy for us to jockey for position, to find our worth and how good other people say that we are. It is easy to say that we are worthless when we compare ourselves to others who do something better. It is easy to link our worth to the wrong thing. Lord, draw us close to you. Let us feel within our spirits the power of you calling us your children. Lord, in, in silence, we live to you. The things that we have done or that we have left undone that have fallen short of your great calling, we lift to you the wounds of our spirit that have left us needing affirmation outside of you, that you might heal us and forgive us. In silence, Lord, we lift ourselves to you. breath you take. Feel the spirit of God coming within you. The breath, the life of God. Let it heal your wounds. Let it strengthen you to be one that uplifts others. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God's grace and love are unfathomable. That, that means, you know, the fathoms, the way they march, the measure of depth, there, there's no end to where that, you, you can't even measure the depths of that. We can rejoice that without doubt, God's grace is bigger than our missteps. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and made new. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. We are grateful for all those who support the church, and even though we can't pass the plate in order to be safe, uh, we do want to bless the offering that folks have given. So let us rise and join in the doxology. <laughs>
are the source of all of our gifts. We give thanks to you for all that we have received, and we ask that these gifts that have been received in your honor, that we lay at the foot of your cross, that you bless them to further your kingdom on this earth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's join in our closing hymn, number 581, The Lord is Truth, Whose Love Through Humble Service. Thank you. 